What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because I'm bringing you guys a deck that I just topped with this past weekend at the Waterloo Regional. There was about 300 players, I think a little bit under 300 players, some really big names, some really big talent, and I ended up topping that event with Sword Soul, a deck that I've been loving this format. Even though I'm literally like brand new to the deck, I've been playing it for a week and a half, but I ended up learning the deck even before the regional. I was literally playtesting with my friend Rayhan and he literally showed me like three combos lines i've never seen before so i was literally learning the deck on the spot but i ended up topping with it of course you know your boy spanko's smart so you know i wasn't gonna lose you know i wasn't gonna lose on the deck like this but i was having so much fun with it and i did end up topping i came 19th place x2 i went six and two at the event the only two losses i had were to two players who also actually ended up topping one of them i was kind of tilted about don't get me started into that. You guys will see it in the vlog, which comes out on Thursday. And the other one, eh, the other one was against Milano and I misplayed and that's completely on my fault. So I'm not going to blame him. He's a great duelist, man. The guy's a great guy, to be honest with you. So anyways, I don't want to keep you guys waiting for too long. Make sure you guys like the video and subscribe to the channel if you guys do enjoy this kind of videos. I've been loving playing competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! again. The summer has been great and I really want to show it off to you guys and show you guys that you can be competitive and still have fun with this game. I had so much fun this weekend. So yeah, that's really all I want to say. I hope you guys enjoy the video. And with that, let's get into the deck profile. Okay, so just before we get into the deck profile here, I do want to say that I want to talk about my matchups real quick. Now, I'm not going to go super in-depth. I don't want to keep you guys for too long, but I want to show you guys that all the matchups were like heavy meta matchups. So it was all against meta decks. So here you guys can see Brandon Despian was my round one. I ended up taking that two to one. Then we played against Punk Adventure. We won that two to one as well. Luanderies here. This one was a great match. My opponent was a great player. And this one really actually had me thinking. So this was a tough match. This one here was kind of tilting. I'm not going to lie to you. I had two losses on the event so i went six and two on the entire day it was eight rounds total so six and two and one of the two losses was against tri brigades of all decks i lost to tri brigade this was the weirdest build of tri brigade i've ever seen but i guess it works game one he hit me with a barrier statue weird build but i guess it worked then there's abc adventure theory on one that one two oh then it was libromancer adventure this was actually against milano milano's a great duelist man i've never played against them before and then playing against them this tournament i was like wow like you know this guy might be a fun like goofy guy and he's just having like a ton of fun and just a lot of energy but when it gets to dueling like this guy's actually insane so he's a great duelist and then we have sword soul as the mirror match in round seven which i won and then i had around eight sky striker theory on this was actually against james kim who came second place at ycs hartford so you guys can see a lot of meta decks and a lot of really good players that i ended up playing against so six two overall on the day and it was kind of unfortunate because i think i would have actually got better than 19th place had my losses done a little bit better so milano actually went x3 at the event and he just got 30th place out of the top 32. And then the Tri Brigade player did kind of the same thing. I think he went X2-1, which means they were both under me. So both my losses were under me, kind of ruined the tiebreakers. Otherwise, I would have been like top 10, but whatever, it is what it is. So let's get into the deck profile now. Sorry for taking you guys' time. I just really wanted to show you guys what the event was like. So first, we're playing three Moye, three Long Yuan, two Taiye, as well as two Incredible Ecclesias. These are the perfect ratios. Uh, I don't want to go super in-depth with these because these are pretty obvious, but I just want to say that Incredible Ecclesia was just actually incredible low-key. Like, this card is nuts going second so i i love this card and two tie is perfect you don't want to play more than two because this one requires setup and it's always searchable so these are perfect and then for the rest of the sword soul engine we are playing three emergence one sacred summit as well as one blackout now this i kind of want to talk about because there are some things after the event that i maybe would change just from my experience keep in mind i've only been playing this deck for like a week and a half so there's definitely things that i probably did incorrectly or probably didn't optimize but i will say this though right sacred summon came up one time the entire event and the one time it came up i was already in a winning position so funny enough i may actually want to cut the sacred summit and play a second blackout and just hear me out here the reason for that is because you are playing desires in this deck which i'll show you later and getting rid of the blackout sometimes does suck but what happens is playing two blackout is really good because sometimes you won't need to search it and in simplified game states blackout is insanely powerful there were times i got hit with floodgates and i'm like man if i just had a tenny monster or any worm monster and then a blackout just set i could just end my turn on that and then out the floodgates and then continue on the next turn so sometimes blackout is just really good on its own i've seen builds even play three i don't think i want to go three but it just sacred summon didn't do anything for me so i might cut this and just play a second blackout here then for the Tenyi package, we are playing three Ashuna, of course, three Vishuda, as well as two Adhara, and then two Vessels. Vessels kind of obvious. You obviously want to play the two Vessel. This is like a foolish burial for you. It actually sets up your Taiye as well. But if you already have a non-effect monster on the board, you get an extra search, which is really, really great. Vessel is great. But I'm playing these ratios only. I'm not playing the 
heavenly circle and i'm not playing chitana i don't think those are worth playing actually in my mirror match against sword soul he was actually playing those and it actually ended up being detrimental for him because he went heavenly circle to dodge or veil so i had opened ash and veiler i go veiler he goes heavenly circle i went ash and he just passed his turn. Like that's how bad sometimes having these circle can be because you're tributing this cost and now you're just sitting on a token on your side of the field with nothing else. And then I proceeded to OTK him. So that's why I don't like playing those kind of cards. Those cards are good, don't get me wrong. It's not that they're bad, but the thing is like they are kind of bricks for you, right? Like having these circle requires you to have something to even make it useful. And if your opponent doesn't have hand traps or your combo is gonna go through anyways, then that having these circle is not doing anything for you. These cards, however, are always doing the most for you. So these are the best ones. Vishuda, of course, going second is great. Adhara being a level one means that any Vishuda or Eshuna with Adhara means that you get to a free level 8 synchro which is very very important because I'm going to be showing you guys combos in tomorrow's video so stay tuned because there are going to be combos in tomorrow's video but essentially Adhara, Eshuna alone is like a Chao Fang combo. I made Chao Fang so so much this weekend going first and going second funny enough. Both ways I would make Chao Fang and that card is so good so I'm playing these ratios. I think these ratios are perfect you don't want to play any of the bricky ones. These are the perfect ratio. For the hand trap lineup we are playing 3 Ash and I actually want to talk about the hand trap lineup a little bit because this is really important but we are playing 12 hand traps right so three ash three veiler three dd crow and three imperm okay now i want to say this these nine perfect i would not change these at all there was times i even normal summoned my veiler to get a level eight synchro on the board yes i actually did that and it actually won me a game so these nine i would not change however i will say this dd crow did underperform for me this weekend now i thought i would see a lot more branded despia which i didn't i mean i saw it in my round one and it actually did come up in my round one i hit the target for branded in red and that just helped me win the game that was really really big but the rest of the day dd crow did nothing for me i cited this out pretty much every single time i think the only time i kept it in was against abc Therion, and i think one time i banished a c so that he couldn't make buster dragon but i was already in a winning position at that point anyways in theory it's so good against so many things but it just didn't perform that well for me these nine for sure i I may play Nibiru in the main deck moving forward. We'll see how it goes. But yeah, these were the 12 that I was playing. And I think you need to be playing 12 hand traps. It's just a perfect like number in the deck. Lastly, we are playing two Pot of Desires and one Called by the Grave. I don't want to spend too much time on this, but I do want to say one thing. Okay, I hate Desires. Like I hate this card so much. Every time I activated it at the event and I activated it, like four or five times, every time I did it, it didn't do anything for me. Like I drew into bad cards. It was just really, really bad. But you have to play it, of course, because this deck doesn't really have any draw power in the deck. And you're only really playing with the five cards you open in your hand so desires is really important it's really good especially when you do your full combo and then let's say you don't have any hand traps you can desires after you pull out all your pieces and draw into hand traps so in theory you need to play it but yeah i don't know i just hate this card but yeah these these are like fine i'm playing exactly 40 cards in the main deck just before we get into the extra deck here, guys, if you want your own custom playmat, custom sleeves, make sure to check out yourplaymat.com. You guys can use my code SpankoYGO10YP for 10% off your order. You can even get these Spanko sleeves if you guys want, but you guys can also get your own custom sleeves with your own image or your own custom playmat. So you guys can check that out. It'll help support the channel and you guys get some really cool merch. So for the extra deck, we are playing two Sword Soul Grandmaster, Chichao, the Grandmaster himself. This card's great. One of the Sinister Long Yuan as well as one as a Cheng Yang. One on one is perfect you only really go into them when you're either going for game or you're like you know you can burn this for time this is a lot of situations but yeah you're really only going to them once a game at most then we're playing chow fang this is my favorite card in the extra deck i'm gonna be honest with you i love this card i would go into it as much as i can this weekend because first of all it makes sure that you don't lose to ogre or veiler or any of that kind of stuff nibiru etc etc so chow fang is just really really good and then even going second i actually funny enough made this a lot of the time because it's still 2800 and it makes sure that you know you're still not going to be losing to hand traps even going second i mean people always are going to have hand traps in your hand right so it doesn't matter if they go first or not They're, they might open a veiler or an ogre or something like that so i would really love making chow fang yazi as well as double boxia i will say this i never made yazi one time the entire tournament i know in theory yazi is really really good but it just never came up for me i don't know there's not much more to explain it just never came up but boxy is insane boxy is mvp this card is incredibly great it's the way to get to the chow fang but going second boxia is really really good as well so one baron of course you have to be playing baron now this is the card that i want to talk about a little bit well i don't know if i want to talk about it but i do want to say one thing about it specifically and that is this card never came up and this card sucks do not play this card never came up one time for me the entire tournament unlike yazi yazi actually has application dragon doesn't really have that much application you know like i didn't really like this card one thing i wanted to play for some spanko spice was a borrowed savage dragon and you guys might be wondering why would you play savage and sword soul it doesn't even make sense well you are still making monk of the ten yi and shaman of the ten yi which i'll show you guys in a bit and those are link monsters for the savage and yes savage only gets one negate but even an 
Omni Negate, sometimes it's just better than a Dragite. So I don't know. I'm going to be honest with you. I think I would cut this card in the future. Maybe if you're playing Chitana specifically, you can play this. But in this build specifically, I would not want to play this in the future. So I'm definitely going to cut this. Don't know exactly what for yet. Maybe I do the Spanko Spice and hit you with the Savage Dragon. But yeah, I don't know. I don't really like this card. Draco Berserker was really good though for me. I really like this card. And then this, oh, this was my favorite card to make all weekend. This card was nuts. I love it. So I, I made this card multiple times, actually funny enough. And every time I made it, it was just like auto win. So I made it round one against my Despi opponent. And I think what ended up happening was he had an Aluber and I had a couple hand traps. So I stopped his combo and all he had was an Aluber on board. And so I was like, okay, so I made Crimson Blader and then I just attacked over his Aluber. And then he couldn't summon anything for his next turn, of course. Because if you guys don't know, if it destroys a monster by battle, uh, your opponent cannot normal or special summon level 5 or higher monster during the next turn, right? Okay, so then the only way to play around this is to not summon a monster that I can attack over. But then at that point... I'm going to OTK you with all my other cards. So Crimson Blader was nuts. So I made this against a Brandy Despia. I made this in the Sword Soul Mirror match. This card is nuts. I loved making this card. I got so excited every time I made it. This is kind of like one of those things where I know Sword Soul was trying it out when the deck first came out, but I think it's very relevant right now. I really, really like this. And then we're playing one Shaman and two Monk. This is 15 cards, of course. Two Monk is enough. You don't need the third Monk. You guys, if you want to play the third Monk, again, just cut the Dragite. I really don't like this card. So either play the third Monk for the Dragite. You guys can be spicy like me and play a Savage Dragon instead of the Dragon guy you guys can play psychic and punisher that one can come up as well because you can banish your spells and traps to level modulate so yeah it's, it's really up to you what you guys want to play in this slot i would say everything else is not changeable but uh the drag guy yeah you guys can definitely take this out and play something a little bit better okay so to round off the deck profile i do want to show you guys a side deck because the side deck did perform really well for me so we're playing two nib as well as three dark ruler no more now i was back and forth with these ratios at first i was playing three nib and two dark ruler but i decided to play three dark ruler because a lot of those theory on decks like abc theory on uh punk theory on all those kind of theory on decks what they can do is sometimes they can put regulus up before they're in nib range so what ends up happening is nib kind of becomes dead whereas dark ruler is always always live against them so i decided to play three and two but again i might move nib in the main deck to be honest with you but these work really good for me whenever i sided them in they were just straight up like game changing cards so these cards are nuts then i played one harpies as well as three cyclone i don't have lightning storm i probably would play lightning storm if i had them i just don't have them myself but these were fine for me they came up a few times and it was relevant when they did come up so of course you're playing these and then lastly you're playing three d barrier auto win button against a lot of decks and then three anti-spell anti-spell is nuts this card is insane the, these these cards are nuts you have to be playing this i wouldn't change really anything here at all if i do end up playing nibs in the main deck of course you can add something in but uh yeah i, I really like this side deck it really performed well for me so that is it for today's video i hope you guys did enjoy now i do want to say that i know i mentioned that there were some changes that i would make to the deck post the event keep in mind that this is the exact list that i played the event with i was just telling you guys some things that after the event i noticed with the deck that could be changed to be more optimized for the format and for the meta so yeah keep that in mind because if you guys want to play this deck and you guys want to build this deck you guys can build it the way i played it of course it was good enough to top against some very very great players however you guys can also change it up like i said because that might even optimize it more for you i've been having so much fun this format i've been having so much fun for the last week and a half with this deck literally a week and a half brand new to this deck but i've just been enjoying it so much i hope you guys did enjoy the video make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't already there will be a combo video i should have said that earlier but there will be a combo video for the deck so make sure you guys stay tuned for that okay that's all i want to say i've been rambling on way too much but i hope you guys did enjoy thank you guys all for watching i appreciate every single one of you i really really truly do thank you guys all for being here and with that spanko signing out peace